I decide to throw a surprise lunch in for the people of the new development, I need to shimmy up the totem pole and reclaim my title as she king of the community. But in throwing my surprise lunch in, I'm also gonna make Bonnie look like a lazy SOB. But look, at this point, it's every woman for himself, so I can't feel too bad about it. So, in conclusion, if we see any teens in Jeep Cherokees on the road, we rear end them to keep Roadhead off of our streets. That concludes today's meeting, folks. And just so you ladies know, I will be hosting a luncheon tomorrow for the people of the new development. You weren't gonna tell me about it? I just told you about it, what do you mean? Oh, you did, that's right. Yeah, I just told you, you remember? You did. Bonnie was insane with jealousy. She wanted the hosting slot bad. She didn't want me looking like Nancy Reagan in front of the people of the new development. So she was gonna do anything in her power to sabotage me at my luncheon. She has some nerve pulling a luncheon blitz on me. If she cozies up to the folks in the new development and starts looking like some powerhouse hostess, then I'm the only one who's obsolete around here. Something needs to be done about this, Brendan. All right, Jerry, everything's looking good for the luncheon today. Everything's done, except the pie. I had some real heavy hitters in my bullpen. I'm talking grapes the size of bee cups. A ham roast that could feed a lion pride for a calendar month. I've been up all night psychologically torturing the meat so it's extra tender. Putting it in solitary confinement, really talking it down. I've got a calzone that was so big it registered as a passenger in my car and the buckle seat belt alarm kept going off. So I had to buckle it in and then live with the shame of looking like a calzone chauffeur. The one thing that wasn't complete was my piece de resistance. The dessert, my golden brown crusted, piping hot, jacked up apple pie. The only way I can achieve the crunchiest, crispiest crust is if I cook it 10 minutes before company arrives. So I'm leaving it to the last minute. Uh, mom? Bonnie's calling. Don't answer it. Mom, I can see you're stressed. You're just pouring milk into the dehumidifier. Ah, oh, shit. You must be so excited about your lunch this afternoon. You must also be exhausted with all the cooking that I know you've been doing. I thought to save you a little time, I'd swing by with a store-bought pie so you don't have to worry about doing dessert. A store-bought pie? What am I, from Les Mis? I bet you would like me to serve a store-bought pie at my pristine lunch at Bonnie. I bet you would oh, love I bet, that. Oh, I bet, oh, 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 I bet you'd like that. Why don't you just use a store-bought pie? The same reason your father and I didn't have our wedding at Chuck E. Cheese, Terry. Because we're not slobs in this house. It's just tacky. Oh, yeah. Please come over. Enjoy the store-bought pie. And afterwards, let's have a chicken nugget fight. What you do when you serve a store-bought dessert is you're basically climbing out of the trenches and you're waving the white flag in the air. It's a sign of weakness. It's a lazy dessert. If I were to serve a store-bought pie, I would essentially be Robert E. Lee to Bonnie's Ulysses S. Grant riding into the Apatomox courthouse, handing over my womanhood and passing in my cuisine chart. Can't you see what's happening here? Bonnie's trying to shanghai me. Bonnie's trying to make me look like a dried up Baba Yaga woman by leaving me with the store-bought. Terry, when you serve a store-bought dessert, it says, I wanted to have a party, but I didn't want to actually cook anything because I was too busy watching the Drew Carey show in the nude. Disgusting. I got news for you, Biddy. I'm serving the freshest red wall pie you've ever goddamn heard Golden of. Golden brown, crispy Look crust. Look Bonnie. You think you're gonna find that shit in store-bought pie? I cut the umbilical myself. This is a grandma's pop. This thing would make Ina Garten shit himself. We can't cook this baby until 10 minutes before company arrives because I'm serving this thing. That's cutting it a little close, isn't it? I'm an adrenaline junkie, Terry. I need the rush, but I'll admit these are stressful times. And on top of that, Dave's gone missing. I sent him to the mall two days ago to pick up some napkin holders, but I haven't heard from him since, and he hasn't been picking up his flip phone. Mom, we should be seriously concerned about Dad's whereabouts right now. Not until the luncheon's over, Terry. I mean, he's been gone for 48 hours. He never leaves the house for more than one hour at a time. That's the policy. I mean, don't you have him hooked up to a camera anyway? Couldn't we just look there? Are you talking about the Dave cam? The Dave cam, yeah. Terry, so. have some respect. This is your father. Call it the dad cam. Teresa, have some respect. My name's not Teresa. Teresa, okay, this is not some guy. 
This is your father, David. David Gale Waters Waters. He, yes, he took my first name as his middle name, as does any good husband. Okay, fine. Let's queue up the Dave cam. Whoa, where am I? Hello? I need night vision goggles. What, how do I get out of here? How in the name of H-E double hockey sticks do I get out of here? Oh, pizza nuggets. I have been in one step. It's dark. So it turns out my husband got lost in a Hollister for 48 hours. Luckily, some employees found him under the bootcut jeans, shaking and unshaven, looking like a lost hiker. It was awful. I thought I'd go in to browse for a second, but I, it's so dark in there, I, I couldn't see a thing. Okay, Dave, I'm gonna have to ask you to go outside for a couple minutes, because you smell like an eighth grade homophobe getting ready for his first party. I know. All right, Dave, I get that you went through some kind of trauma here, but the honeymoon period of my pity party is over. Uh, I have a luncheon to prepare. Have you done all your jobs? I've been on the missing persons list for the past 48 hours. Did you get Hillary Clinton groomed? Oh, cream cheese. David, you bitch. It was then and there that my husband, Dave, put the entire luncheon in absolute jeopardy. My rescue beach on Hillary Clinton walked in the room, looking like absolute Whoa. hell. Whoa. Whoa! You didn't get Hillary Clinton groomed, David? She looks like... A hyena! Whoa, whoa! Perfect. Oh my god. So when company whoa, arrives, is that? we can say, oh, don't mind this raccoon pup that we keep around the house. She looks like she just did the walk of shame. What was she at? Worcester's Hottest Dance Club? She had booms last night? Whoa! She looks like Cindy Lauper! She doesn't look like Cindy hey. Lauper. Who wants to milk my bush baby? What has she been studying for finals? She looks like a Dust Bowl era knickknack saleswoman. She looks the same as she always looks. You look like a dino baby. She looks like a monster. Hey, stop did it. Paul Giamatti have a goat kitten and give it to Gail? I'm mad. Look at her, she's sitting like the DreamWorks kid right now. It's okay. It's not your fault, it's your husband, David. I see what you're trying to say there. In the new development, there are golden retrievers that look like Gina Davis, fresh out of the shower, riding around on segways, but here at 95 Carrington, our family pet is a strung out, Albert Einstein looking house bat. I've got an idea. Terry, put her electric fence collar on. We'll play it off like she's an outdoor dog. David, crank her electric fence up to shake and bake in case she tries to make a break for it. I don't want that thing out in the loose. Gail, I don't know about shake and bake. That's some Jurassic Park voltage right there. Do it, David. Mom, it's almost 1.30. Way ahead of you, Terry. The oven is preheated to 350. Let's brown that pie. <laughs> wearing a light jacket and casually walking from shop to shop in this oven, not browning an apple pie! Oh, oh Regis, Kathy, and Philbin! Yeah, We're gonna fine. have to use the Stuart Little oven. Okay. <laughs> it's been compromised. Mom, I think I just saw Bonnie in the Something house. Something fishy is going on. This may sound insane, but I'm gonna have to grill this pie. <gasps> Okay, so the company will be here in about six minutes and you're stuck with this zygote of a dessert. Okay, uh, uh, I gotta run the gas bins. Use Rick and Peg's oven. <laughs> and there were the guests, pulling up the street. I was finished, cradling that gray, undercooked, premature pie. It was over. All your kitchen appliances broken on the day of your luncheon? Looks to me like your company is going to be here in about 30 seconds. I don't know of any oven that would have high enough voltage to turn that beige into that golden brown crust that you and I would both consider party worthy. So Gail, make it easy on yourself. Why don't you just serve the store-bought pie? Fuck you, Bonnie. Just like the white wind sing song sounds like she's singing. Just like the white wind sing song sounds like she's singing.
wielding that piping hot golden brown innkeeper's pastry that would make Betty Crocker squirt while Bonnie stood there with her dick in her hands nursing that store-bought disgrace. Sure, I sent 5,000 volts of electricity through my body and tore through the second story of my home like a cannonball, but I mean, come on, what would you have done?